pair. Magnus with the white pieces, game will start. And this was the situation yesterday as well, David. It was a must-win situation for Hikaru. Mm -hmm. um, what will he have learned from that? Yeah, he will have learned that if he does get a small chance to be aggressive, he has to seize it. And that's why Nakamura already on after move one, Nakamura spent a minute and a half there just thinking because he was trying to come up with an idea for Black that would throw Magnus. And in this position, White has options. White can push a pawn in the center. The move I personally like, especially in Blitz and Rapid Chess, is to actually move the knight on the left-hand side. And OK, he does push forward with the pawn. And uh, OK, immediately the tension in the center has been eliminated, but the tension is still on the board. It just transfers over to the sides. The reason I like this position, though, is it's actually the same opening as a line of the English uh, opening with colours reversed. White has one extra tempo, however, and uh, that's why I think it's quite a good opening for White. So right now, White can play bishop. The move I would play is bishop takes knight. But OK, Magnus plays a very positional move, and the whole motif of this little move is actually to prevent Black's light square bishop developing and pinning the knight against the queen. Magnus just weighing up the risks now. He might develop a knight, might develop a rook. Might just take that pawn off and might even capture that knight on the left side of the board. But we'll see. Yeah, Sport we'll see. And he, he's chosen the most solid approach, and that is just capturing the pawn, just as David recommended. Okay. So he, he does, in fact, capture with the pawn. I think capturing with the rook was mm -hmm. maybe playing a little bit with fire. Yeah. And uh, OK, Magnus now developing. Oh, but I do agree frowning. with you. <laughs> a lot. Yeah, Magnus surprised by that decision. I think it's not because it's a bad move by Nakamura, but just because it's a move which shows, actually, he's not taking risks. Nakamura, he's in a must-win situation, but he's not taking risks. You mentioned, Yvanka, Black could have taken with the Rook, and I think that would have been a more dynamic way to play. Is it still ambitious by Hikaru? Yes, he's uh, definitely taking some risks. Mm. He's just improving his queen there. We see in Nakamura's face, he did kind of made a hmm type of face. And, um, okay, meanwhile, Magnus does reroute the white bishop. That bishop wants to step one square back, attacking black central pawn. Both sides have isolated pawns in the middle, and it is about who can target the opponent's weak pawn first. <laughs> Naka not really looking too happy with this position, but he's doing the right thing. He has taken some risks, at least. Okay, I like what Magnus Carlsen's last move. We do notice a lot of pressure on this pawn. It's eyed up by white's knight. Uh, and white's bishop. That's why Black had to retreat his knight to this square. And now Magnus bringing his queen forward, attacking this knight. The knight can't move, otherwise the central pawn would be lost. That's why Nakamura plays a move he would have hated to play, especially in a must-win situation. He has to retreat the other knight back to where it came from, back to its start square to protect its fellow here. And um, the reason the computer hates Black is simply the passivity of these two knights. They're both stuck. Both of them have to stay where they are, defending things. Uh, meanwhile, though, the, what Nakamura will be positive about is that maybe later on he can start pushing some pawns against the White King. If things get desperate, that will be his last chance to start pushing pawns. Ma meanwhile, Magnus going forward with his queen, trying to attack this pawn. Nakamura defends it. It's all about this central pawn right now. If Magnus can break through and win it, Magnus will simply win the game. He'll coast to victory. But Nakamura defending it for now and getting ready later on to launch a counterattack. Yeah, I was about to say a few moments ago, I, although the computer likes white, I don't think it's winning. I don't think it's that much. Um, I think it's a small advantage for now. But two or three moves, it could completely change. Um, so Nakamura definitely, I'm not writing him off. I think he's got decent chances. I like how he's been fighting over these last few moves. Mm -hmm. He's kind of been clinging on, keeping the tension, that last pawn push, stopping White's idea of bringing the bishop to that left side. Also creating an idea, an idea of Black's bishop jumping out to attack yeah. the White Queen. And uh, not just attacking the, the White Queen, trapping it too, David. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is a big threat in the position, and this is something that always sets the heart the heart rate uh, pulsing up and down, and uh, you can see that is the big threat. And uh, the queen doesn't have too many squares if Magnus allows that move. Unfortunately... You, huh? you sure it's trapped, though, Yvanka, if I just move the rook? I, maybe I can hide out here. You're it's hiding not, from it's me. Not nice, okay. but, uh, it's not a nice square, but uh, <laughs> it is a safe square for now. But the knight can even jump forward into black's half. And we do see this position on the board now. The white queen hasn't been kicked back. But Nakamura, he needs to find a backup plan to that one. He needs to find a follow-up, at least. Um, I like how he's been handling the board and the clock, but this rook needs to join the action. OK, he doesn't use that rook. He uses the other rook. Mysterious. 
mysterious stuff. And uh, I'm surprised he didn't utilize this piece. But now at least he has some pressure along this line. Nakamura trying his best at least to fight. One thing I'm still struggling to understand is why the computer favors White so much. I mean, White's position is fine, it's harmonious, everything's protected, but it gives White such a big advantage. I think it's to do with that knight, that really bad knight that's next to the Black King. <laughs> I mean, what's it doing? Nothing. True. <laughs> so I, I think on that basis... One bad piece makes a bad one, position. Right? Exactly. And uh, the computer's just saying, you're not going to get that one out. Um, OK, Magnus does drop the bishop back, offering a trade of rooks. That's very safe and um, a good tip for everyone, just... Bishop's long-range pieces, they're OK at the back rank. It's more important to make sure the rest of your pieces aren't blocked in. And Magnus happy to initiate one set of trades with the rooks. And now, surely it's time to move the knight in front of the remaining white rook. Open up the white rook, improve that knight. Yeah, suddenly, the more I look at it, white's pieces, they're unravelling. And uh, well, yeah. he didn't move the knight to the square that I wanted it to. I kind of wanted it to go to the right. But OK, he's gone to the left and uh, now... Looking at the black centre pawn, although that is not on prees, not under attack just yet. But still some nice squares for it to go to. So Hikaru, well, he retreats his bishop and it seems to me that he's just, uh, just trying to find some moves, perhaps trying to cause Magnus to panic a little bit with the threat or the dream of attacking on the right side. So if there's no strategic ideas for black, if there's no way to um, assert your strategic dominance, you have to go dynamic. You have to play on the front foot. Mm -hmm. He does retreat his queen, however, still biding his time, uh, maybe creating a square for the black rook to use. But yeah, it does feel like Nakamura um, slowly is running out of opportunities mm. to complicate this one. Um, White's queen has stepped back and the black bishop has improved itself. Um, that black bishop looks a bit shaky, though, Yvanka, on an open line, and that's why white does line up his queen and the white rook, the black bishop stepping back. Only one set of rooks have left the board. Only two pawns have left the board. There's still plenty of ammunition left for black to create an attack later. Magnus, I don't know how he found the top computer suggestion there. It wasn't even on my radar. <laughs> Bringing the white queen all the way over to the other side, lining up the queen with the bishop, using a bit of teamwork along the light square diagonal, but... Um, still white lacking an immediate plan. Nakamura waiting, biding his time for the right moment. And OK, four minutes versus eight minutes. Anything still possible. Uh, I liked your idea, Yovanka, pushing a pawn. That pawn might have been doomed, but at least you block it up. You exactly. gain a bit of time. Uh, you gain a few moves at least. And uh, OK, a trade has happened and white's bishop jumped forward. And Nakamura, OK, now he is making his intentions clear. Mm. He's pushing pawns finally on that right hand side. Just scare, at least planting the thought of a kingside attack uh, in Magnus's mind. He's trying to scare Magnus, but Magnus not flinching, retreating the white knight. There's a threat in the position. The square that the knight was previously on has been vacated, and white's bishop now wants to jump out there, attacking black's rook, pinning that rook to the black queen. Hikaru did step back with the rook, and Magnus now rerouting his knight. And uh, look at Hikaru. Hikaru just says, you want to go to that square? I'm not allowing that knight there at all. Wow, so Magnus has actually won a pawn. Um, we were so busy looking at the right side of the board, we forgot that black was hanging a pawn on that left side. So although white has had to give up a bishop for a knight, a fair trade, um, to win that pawn, it looks like uh, white's remaining pawn now on that left side. It will cause a distraction, a serious distraction for Nakamura. And uh, white's... Looking yeah, solid. Magnus is just uh, really working that solid angle. He's not letting Hikaru do anything. Okay, so Hikaru advances his pawns and uh, definitely there is the threat of an attack. And uh, Hikaru, well, Magnus attacks the queen. But okay, is there some chances now for some sort of tricks? The queen can step back. The queen was most likely will step back. Yeah. Um, Black could, if he's feeling ambitious, uh, just counterattack against White's queen there with his rook, but the queen does eventually step back. And um, I don't really see the immediate threat for Black. I do like what Black's done. He's activated the diagonal of his dark squared bishop. I was uh, maybe saying that that was an issue with Black's position just a few moves ago, but Black's dark squared bishop... Yeah, OK, so, so Hikaru has gone for my pal. I'm desperate times... Desperate measures. OK, so the Black Knight reroutes itself and the whole aim is that the Knight is going to come forward and try to cause some mischief in the centre. So, I mean, the big test of this is just simply can White capture the pawn and just say, I'm going to be two pawns up. 
I think the answer is yes. You can be greedy. <laughs> Take a second pawn. Why not? Um, if we just bring up... OK, we don't need to bring up the analysis board because Magnus just moves. If he had captured that pawn, I think he was fine, Magnus Carlsen. But Black would have gained some time by attacking the Black Queen. So Magnus not being greedy, jumping forward back with his knight to where it came from, actually. Um, now, just daring Nakamura to play Bishop takes knight, ruining the white pawn structure, but um, actually just removing a potential attacker, that Black Bishop was doing quite a good job putting some pressure on White's position. So Magnus is saying, you can trade, but I'm getting closer to the draw if you do that. And maybe Black needs to do that. Um, Nakamura now debating whether there's an option. Do you have to take that knight, Yovanka, that has just moved? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> unfortunately, I would, uh, I would love to say no, but uh, it's so dangerous. That knight is going to come into the centre. It's threatening a pawn, and that's a key pawn. So, um, mm -hmm. unfortunately, Magnus... He's playing amazing chess yeah. and uh, it is Hikaru, the one who is in deep, deep trouble. And if this were a normal game, it would be Hikaru who would be doing everything possible for the draw. Mm -hmm. And uh, what would you do, David? Would you capture the knight? Reluctantly, I think so. With a heavy heart. Yeah. Um, there's just nothing else yeah. for Nakamura to do. And I don't think we can fault either players uh, in this game. Magnus, he's played perfect chess, solid chess, not taking too many risks. Naka's played great chess as well, creative, trying to make things happen. But it's just so hard as black yeah. if your opponent's in a solid mood, especially when your opponent's the world champion. And uh, Nakamura, he's trying and he'll continue taking those risks because a draw is useless at this point. But um, yeah, he's running out of opportunity to do that. He's running out of pieces as well mm -hmm. if Bishop takes knight right now. And the time advantage is getting very low. Yeah, it's mm. disappeared pretty mm. much already. Mm. And uh, yep, he has traded the bishop for the knight and now pushed his knight to a better square. But okay, David's very ruthless. <laughs> and okay, Nakamura playing a defensive move. Nakamura offers a draw Whoa. with that move and Magnus accepts. Magnus wins the tournament. Magnus Carlsen is the winner of the new in chess classic. The first tournament he wins in the Meltwater Champions chess tour. And there he logs up. All right. <laughs> 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 He's got a little bit there, but there we have the reaction. Huge congratulations. Thank you.